My name is Annabelle Kay and I'm from Coffee Clatch and I'm here to talk to you about smart tips and tricks for hiring and managing freelancers. Freelancing is the new employment in the UK. There are more people being hired as freelancers than being taken on as employees. Why is that, do you think? Flexibility, Flexibility. yeah. Um, Avoiding employment laws, so there's a kind of fear of employing people, isn't there? All sorts of issues. And kind of freelancing is the new employment, right? like Thursday's the new Friday, which confuses me. But who do you pay currently in your business that is not an employee? You pay a subcontractor, a cleaner, a graphic designer? Who do you pay? Get your head around it for a minute, because it's very rare the answer's absolutely nothing. Nobody. Even pay an accountant from time to time or a tax advisor if you're really doing it all without some contractor expenses. Have you set up ways of measuring their performance? Because if not, how do you know that they're going to do what you want? Well, we're on the psychic theory of managing freelancers here. It's a good one if you're clairvoyant, and they are, of course. It doesn't always work. Have you got a real written agreement with them? Because yeah. we tend to think employment law over there very dangerous, freelancers over here very safe because I've just called a non-employee and that's all right then. No trouble at all, is it? Yeah, no, it doesn't always work out that way. So people tend to think, oh, I call someone freelance and that's in a safe box and I call someone employed and it's not. But if you think it through, you are paying money to limited companies sometimes. The people you pay are working for limited companies. And those are mostly regulated business to business, aren't they? Terms of trade, terms of purchase. But sometimes those companies are what they call umbrella companies. They're vehicles for one person. Um, did you know that those two can sometimes be different in terms of whether you have to withhold tax or not? Because no, we sometimes think limited fine. We also do business with people who are either sole traders or in partnership as a group. That's perfectly normal, isn't it? Did you know that the sole trader can sometimes have very different status to the partnership when you pay them? What I'm talking about here is a rather arcane idea. If you're paying individuals who are obliged to do work in person, the EU and the tax man look at these people as workers. And it's no good arguing they didn't do nothing, so it doesn't count, right? They are hybrids between people who run a business and employees. Would you like to guess what rights workers have? They don't. That's a very common answer. Workers who are obliged to provide work in person have the right to minimum wage, statutory holidays. They have a full set of discrimination and equality rights, all the big ones you're really scared about, the expensive ones. The only rights they don't have are the ones employees get on top, because it's like a layer, which is unfair dismissal. So, if you think, oh, I'm employing Fred, and I've told Fred, Fred's self-employed, and that's all right, no biggie, you may get lucky, but you may not. I had a client that came to me a few years ago, had a business involving pilot training, and he said to me, all my people are freelancers, no employment law problems, what do you think? And I looked at the relationship, and I said, I think, actually, this is a relationship of employment, because of the way you control them, and I think that this is a big mistake, and it's also undocumented, and he said, what do you know? What do I know, after all? Charged him 500 quid, ignored my voice, fair enough, come back again, which of course he did. 18 months later he came back, he terminated a freelance agreement. What do you do when you terminate a subcontract? You just tell them you're not using them anymore, or sometimes you don't even do that, do you? Just stop picking up the phone. He did that, had a guy that wasn't that good. The guy took him to employment tribunal, and my wouldn't be client laughed and said, well, he's not an employee, he's a freelancer. Mm -hmm. Turned up in tribunal six months later. They're getting quicker now, by the way, it's three months. And the tribunal judge said to him, well, you tell him when to work, how to work, you provide the equipment, you provide the insurance. What do you mean he's in business for himself? Unfair dismissal. My client went, oh, only two and a half grand. His business was doing quite good at that point. I can live with that, don't like it. I can live with that. Then the revenue turned up six weeks later and said, so we want the back pay as you earn on this guy and the 13 others that are on the same contract. So if you get the label wrong about freelancers, it can either kill your business further on, 
or it just hits you at that moment when you finally have got that money for that holiday that you worked five years to have. Because do you know when the revenue come for you? About five years in. You need to understand that tax and employment law covers businesses. When do you detect tax from a business who supplies you? It's the test when it is the sole trader in an umbrella company and you're obliged to under IR35. The fact you're paying a limited company doesn't of itself do that for you. See your accountant afterwards, not me, if you are now having hysterics. If the people are workers who are obliged to personally perform service for you, you may have to do that too. And obviously, if they are employees above the threshold for tax and national insurance. So the little magic <coughs> wand of, I'll just tell them all they're self-employed, isn't as effective as you might think it is because our legal system looks at what you actually do. Otherwise, you know what, 33 years ago when I got into employment law, I just said, tell them all they're self-employed, end of. So it never struck you that there must be a reason why that doesn't work when we keep getting all these unfair dismissal cases. It's because it doesn't work. So we've talked about the tax thing. You've got to deduct tax. And if you're not sure what you're doing, talk to your accountant about it, and I'm not going to give you a tax lecture, it's not very exciting, but don't wait five years and get the bill. That's very exciting, but not in the way that you want. <laughs> right? Who owns the copyright if you're paying a subcontractor? Absolutely. With the employees, the default's yours. And when most of us grew up in an employment environment, so we kind of think that's the way it is. But as soon as you get out to subcontractors, it's theirs. Paid a VA to create a mailing list for you? Who owns it? In the absence of a proper contract, they do. Like you may have the right to use it, but they own the copyright in the document. Lots and lots of small businesses are running completely naked and have no IP secured in their business at all. What difference does it make? We'll try selling it. <laughs> if they don't nick the business from you beforehand. What you need with subcontractors is a real agreement. This is not, I think in my head it's fine, right? This is that I will respect you in the morning after approach, very rarely successful. A real agreement has to be realistic about who does what. Ever felt you were shortchanged by a subcontractor because you thought you paid them to do A and B and they only did A? Ever been a subcontractor and went, I can't believe they expect me to do all that for the money? This is classic signs of failure to specify who's doing what for the money. This should teach you that you need better commissioning processes, if nothing else. And they need to be realistic. I was doing someone the other day who was threatening to kill their VA, metaphorically, I hope, because every time they were on a deadline, she logged off at half past four and went home. She was self-employed, why not? The reason why she was doing that was the whole reason why she was a VA was so she could do the school run at 4.45. They never had a conversation about how does this work for us. He might have picked another VA, perhaps he should have done, or she might have had another client. But what they'd come to was a very stressful, negative relationship because they never had a real agreement about when support would be available and for what. You need to have an agreement that allows this to end neatly. Most people in this country are obliged to work to the age of 67, is it now? At least the youngsters coming through. It is not reasonable to expect the people you're paying today to work for you until they die, however bad a boss you are. Most of them will leave you to work for someone else. If you expect that and you plan for it, you need to think about what happens afterwards. Can they approach all your clients? Is that what you want? Have you not an agreement that says they shouldn't? You need to plan your ending. The best time to plan your breakup is when you're dating. Trust me on this one. Prenups are good. It needs to be appropriate. It needs to reflect what you're really trying to achieve. And it also needs to deal with the legals. Really? It needs to handle the rights, the obligations and the taxes so that if those things come to you, you've got something that protects you. So if you're just wondering about paying people going, you're self-employed, you may be in for a few shocks. I hope you're not, but I do urge you to consider a real agreement as you grow your business. There we are. Am I running to time, sir? Yes, you are. Well, I'm done. <laughs>